<laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Welcome to D-Lab. In this video, we are going to hook up an ICOM HM7 microphone to Ellicraft K2 transceiver. The process is fairly simple as long as you follow the instructions. Here we go. So here it is, a very clean Ellicraft K2-100 transceiver. Now you can see your microphone connector here, which is the same type used on the ICOM HM7 and several other models of microphones that ICOM makes. So this little guy will mate right up, okay? So wouldn't it be nice if you could just plug it in and get right on sideband? Well, that's not the case. You have to do some configurations. But the main thing is, is do you have the KSB2 sideband adapter installed in your radio? Because if you don't have that, it doesn't matter if you put a microphone on here, you're not going to be talking on sideband. So first thing, ensure you have that adapter module installed. Then, if you go through here on page 17 is a microphone configuration. So there is a chart here. You go through the chart and it's going to list all these different microphones by different manufacturers. Over here is the ICOM and the HM7 is listed. So we're in good shape. Next thing is we have to open up the radio and figure out what the configuration is. So the first step of the process is to remove this front panel. The instructions talk about some screws that are holding this front panel to the control board. So I'm going to pop the top and inspect this thing and then we're going to remove the front panel, flip it down and do the jumper configuration. So I remove this top plate so you can kind of give an idea of what it's going to take to get that front panel off. This thing is really compact. I have not been in this radio before, so this is all new to me. So I'm going to just take it one step at a time. Alright, so getting closer, you obviously have to remove all the knobs. And then there's one Phillips screw that goes through the front panel right next to the encoder. Don't forget that. And of course, there is a nut on the encoder itself. Then, this front panel will slide right off. And now you can see the front board. There's still two screws that we have to remove and then it's supposed to be able to unplug. Let's we'll see how that goes. So yep, it's simply unplugged. There's one edge connector down here at the bottom of the board. Okay. When I took this off, I heard something go cling. I was like, oh no. Well, it turned out it was two little lock washers and they obviously were trapped between these standoffs and this front board. So when you go to install it, you have to make sure that you get those lock washers back in place. And there are some little witness marks here on the foils. So there's no doubt that's where they were. Okay. So here are the jumpers that they're talking about in the procedure. All right. It tells you what position these little jumpers need to be into for the microphone that you're going to use. So I'm going to go through that and get that configured correctly, I hope, the first time, and then we'll give it a shot. All right, so here is where it gets a little bit confusing. And I studied the manual, and I got it figured out. So you got these little two-pin terminations, okay? These are the type you'd see, like, in a computer. So to the left of that, you see the function. AF, push to talk, down, up, function, five volts, and grounds, right? On this side, these are the microphone pin connectors, all right? So if your type microphone, AF, goes to pin one, you can use this jumper. If AF went to pin three, you can't. You're gonna have to run a jumper wire from this pin to this pin. In this case, the HM7 mic, there's not too many of these that line up straight across. So I'm gonna be removing these jumpers. And then the other thing that you have to do for a microphone like the HM7 that has a preamp, you have to add a little resistoroid, okay? That is to power up the little preamp and the electric little microphone element, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I'm going to cut back and show you the final configuration. The wiring for the HM7 is complete 
on the little Ellicraft K2. So here is what was required. AF is on pin 1, push to talk is 5, down is 3, up obviously is not used, and neither is the function. The 5 volt needs to be strapped through the 820 ohm resistor to pin 1, okay? And then you have ground on 6 and 7. So here's how I ended up doing it. I went ahead and used direct wires for the 5 volt line going to pin 2. And here you can see push to talk, which is going to pin 5. This resistor also goes to pin 1, which is the AF line, and that's a direct jumper. Jumper 3, which is down, is also direct since they're adjacent to each other. For my grounds, I soldered a little piece of hookup wire from 6 to 7, and then over to the grounds. Okay, Both these grounds are at the same potential, so there's no reason to run two. So a little J of wire for the grounds, and everything looks good. I'm going to reassemble this thing, and I hope it works. So I got the front panel reattached. Remember I told you, down in there, with those little lock washers, I'd use a pair of tweezers to get those trapped in there. It wasn't too bad of a job. So let's finish the reassembly. Alright, before we do final assembly, let's just do a quick wellness check. Make sure that none of these pins got shorted to ground except for 6 and 7 because we tied those to ground, right? So here's 6, yep, 7, and we didn't use 8 at all. So that all looks good. Shouldn't produce any smoke when we turn it on. All right, here we go. Initial test. I'll let you in on a secret. I actually bought this microphone at a ham fest for like $10 and I never was able to test it before wiring it to the alley craft. So, I hope it works. If not, whatever. Here we go. Okay, oh, look at there. And if you watch your watt meter over there, you get an output. So obviously the next thing to do would be to put her on the air and get some audio reports. But now, I've got my little HM7 hooked up to the alley craft. I usually only use this thing for QRP operation, um, but then lately I've been wanting to have a quick get on the air unit, and I thought, hey, you know, to get on like 10 meter sideband, if it'll ever open up, this would be a great little rig. And this jobber is actually being powered by solar power. I'll take you out and I'll show you that. All right, so here they are. They just sit on the ground. They're two 200 watt solar panels. And these things are charging a big old deep cell battery that's underneath my radio bench. So I can go completely off the grid with this station. Well there you go guys. You got to see N6TLU wire up that Ellicraft input jack. It's a little bit different than most transceivers. So if you dare attempt it, hopefully this information I gave you will help you out. We'll see you on the air sometime. N6TLU. 73s.